Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to this channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, I'm kind of building on a video that I did several months ago where I talked about central post stroke pain. In that video, I talked about several treatments that you can do for that. I will link that video in the description below. But one of the treatments I had mentioned was desensitization strategies. And I did get several comments in that video requesting a video where I could go into some of those desensitization strategies. And so that is what we are going to do today. In addition to that, in this video, I'm just going to quickly review the difference between nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain, because I think it is important to understand the difference to know what type of pain you're experiencing or what the cause of your pain is. Knowing that will make a difference in what treatment strategies you select, as well as a progressive program to desensitize your pain sensors with the end goal of hopefully being to decrease the discomfort that you are experiencing. But before we dive into all that, if you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos. And now let's go ahead and dive into the content of today's video. So first and foremost, what is the difference between nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain. And I know I already mentioned it, but it's worth repeating. Don't forget, I am linking in the description below a video that I did on central post-stroke pain, which is going to go into a little bit more depth on neuropathic pain. But it is important to know the difference. So nociceptive pain is discomfort that you feel in response to potentially tissue damaging stimuli. Now, neuropathic pain, on the other hand, is discomfort that you feel or discomfort that is sensed by the brain due to a lesion or some sort of dysfunction in one or more components of the pain pathways in the nervous system. And then some people feel discomfort due to a combination of the two, nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain, especially after a stroke or a brain injury, or when dealing with some of the side effects of multiple sclerosis, you may experience some combination of this. The good news is, is that the desensitization strategies that we go over today really do help whether it is nociceptive pain or neuropathic pain. The only reason that I bring this up is because when it comes to medical treatment, it's really important to be able to articulate what your pain feels like and when you're experiencing pain to your medical doctors so that they can make sure and put you on the right medications. I do see a lot, and actually this just came up this week, a patient that's on a medication for nerve pain, and he doesn't even know why he's on it. He said they put him on it in the hospital, and he's just never gone on it. So he had a stroke, he woke up, his wife confirms this, that he was just put on this medication, and they've never really adjusted it. So first, it's important to know what your medications are actually doing or what their purpose is. And second, it is to be able to communicate clearly with your healthcare team what types of pain you are experiencing so that they can help you get on the best medications to address your specific pain. But this is not a video on medications. I'm not a medical doctor. I am not telling you or recommending any types of medications or pharmaceuticals that is definitely between you and your medical doctors. I'm just hoping to give you information, again, to help you articulate to your medical doctors what you are experiencing. And again, I've talked about this before, but sometimes after a stroke or a brain injury, it is beneficial. If you live in the U.S., I'm learning through the comments that people that live in Canada and other systems where you have a centralized healthcare system that you really don't have the choice of, as to what types of doctors you want to see. But that being said, in my opinion, if you live in the U.S., I think the best doctor for that is a physiatrist, which another name for that is a physical medicine and rehab doctor. I think that their skill set really comes into play to address many of the symptoms that are the result of a stroke or a brain injury. So if you are experiencing pain that seems unmanageable, you might wanna give that an option. 
if it is allowed in your country. So now, once again, I'm gonna jump off my soapbox and go back into the content of today's video. So, pain. What is the purpose of pain? Pain is a warning signal to our brain that our body or a tissue in our body is in danger. Our response is to avoid that behavior or avoid that situation to prevent further harm. But unfortunately, what that does is in turn, and I've talked about negative feedback loops in previous videos, but I'm gonna talk about that again. It creates kind of a negative feedback loop where we'll unintentionally just avoid certain behaviors that are causing that discomfort. So you have the pain, you have discomfort, whether intentionally or unintentionally, you will avoid the behaviors that are creating that discomfort in somewhat of a protective mechanism to pr protect those tissues from being damaged. The downside of that is sometimes that system gets out of whack for whatever reason. That's not the purpose of this video, but for whatever reason, that pain signal gets out of whack and you feel discomfort when you're not actually in danger of something in your system being damaged. And in that case, a good treatment is desensitization. So basically you want to desensitize or make those behaviors or those situations not as uncomfortable. You've already ruled out that there's not actually anything being damaged. Once you cross that hurdle, the next goal is, is okay, well, let's not allow that pain signal to get to the brain when this behavior happens, knowing that there is no actual danger. And that's the basic premise behind desensitization strategies, is it's slowly introducing stimuli that maybe once were painful to your system or are painful to your system in a gradual manner to slowly desensitize those nerves from sending that pain signal to the brain. And if you think about it, you pretty much already experience this through the day in different ways. So our eyes get desensitized to light in the morning. Initially, you may flip the lights on, you squint, that is a protective mechanism built into our system. Eventually, you adapt to that new light and then you don't squint anymore. It's kind of a similar concept when it comes to desensitization strategies. Instead of just flipping a light switch on and letting that bright light come in like you do in the mornings, we're gonna kind of have a dimmer switch that's gonna slowly tune that light up. So basically, we're going to slowly introduce something that might be shocking to your system in a way that your body will slowly adapt to that stimuli and you don't get that severe uncomfortable sensation. So that being said, it is important to know what stimuli on the body is creating that. Is it stretching? Is it movement? Identifying those things that are triggering that discomfort and then progressively introducing or exposing your system to that thing. So I've broken this progression down into beginner, intermediate, and advanced desensitization strategies. In the beginner phase or in the early stages, some things that are effective are just gentle massage. So whether it's movement or whether it's touch that creates that discomfort, you can do some gentle massage over that area with light pressure and then slowly just increase the amount of pressure that you're applying. Tapping is another stimuli that sometimes works. Start with something with a large surface area like a serving spoon and just gently tap your skin. Then eventually you can slowly progress to things that have a smaller surface area, which would be more intense stimuli to your system. And try that, something like a brush, preferably one of those brushes that the bristles have the little tiny ball on the end, and just gently tap. But again, in the early stages, start out with a serving spoon or something with a large surface area. And then in the early stages, gentle range of motion. You're maybe not even to the point where you're actually doing any stretching. Right now, maybe just a little bit of movement, five to 10 degrees of movement at whatever joints are painful, especially if movement causes the discomfort and very gentle. 
within a pain-free range. Now, this is where you have to really communicate with your therapist. Sometimes patients wait too long to tell me that something's actually uncomfortable, and then that's counterproductive, especially if you are trying to desensitize your nervous system. So starting in a smaller range would be a beginning step in desensitizing your system. Some things that you can do in the more intermediate stage. So let's say all of that goes well, none of that really causes like a huge amount of discomfort. In the intermediate stage, you could do rubbing. Rubbing is definitely gonna be more intense stimuli on the skin. So you can start with something like a towel or a cotton ball, something that's very soft. And then the way that you progress the rubbing is you just increase the abrasiveness of that material. Dipping in an extremity is another thing that you could do in the intermediate stage in something like rice. Anything like that is gonna be a more intense stimuli on that body part. You could advance this a little bit more by putting different textures in that bowl and dipping that extremity in that. Again, that is a more intense stimuli. And then some things that you can do in the advanced stage are vibration, I will put links for a couple of products that I use in my clinic to help with this in the description below. There's Vibe plates, which are really great. They're really not that expensive, and those are good to stand on, especially if you just have pain all over your body. It really is a different type of sensation that is a little bit more intense or aggressive compared to some of the previous stimuli that we've talked about. And then there's vibration wands that you could just use in your hand. Those also would be good to desensitize that area of the body. And contrast baths. So switching from cold to hot water, always test it on your uninvolved extremity first because obviously your sensation is impaired and you wanna make sure that that water is not too hot for you to dip that extremity in, but you just go from hot to cold. That helps with circulation, but it does also help to desensitize the area. And then that is it for this video. I hope you guys found that helpful for those of you that requested this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. Also, if you have any other strategies that you've used to overcome some of your pain that you've experienced after a stroke or a brain injury, or those of you that are living with MS or Guillain-Barre syndrome, I didn't stress that enough. This is extremely common with Guillain-Barre syndrome, having that uncontrolled pain. So if you have GBS and you have some suggestions of some things that you've done to help you with your pain, definitely leave those in the comments below. Once again, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video.